Hey everyone, welcome back to another hardware news recap for the last week. In this one, we're talking about TSMC and their five nanometer process that's aiming to deliver a 1.8x density improvement. Intel's got a 56 core Cascade Lake CPU and AMD sales are expected to surge in second half of 2019 behind its major Computex announcements. Before that, this video is brought to you by EVGA's Z390 Dark motherboard. The Z390 Dark is a flagship motherboard for Intel's unlocked K-SKU CPUs with tuning done by overclock engineering team Kingpin and Tin to enable higher memory and CPU frequencies. The motherboard uses a unique rotated socket design to move EPS 12 volt cables to the right side, making cable management easier, and also sticks to two DIMM slots to improve memory overclocking stability and headroom. We previously analyzed the VRM in full and found it among the best in class for Z390 overclocking, and it also got rid of RGB LEDs. Learn more at the link in the description below. TSMC is the first one. So TSMC is working on five nanometer process. In fact, it's finished its infrastructure analysis and risk assessment for the upcoming process. And this looks like it'll continue to leverage the Foundry's EUV, or extreme ultraviolet technology, which is undoubtedly a bit more mature at this point. Compared to TSMC's seven nanometer process, five nanometer will yield a density increase of 1.8X, according to TSMC's update on their website, and a 15% clock speed increase due to process refinements alone. Those numbers have currently been tested on an ARM Cortex A72 core, and TSMC said their five nanometer process will power HPC applications, SOC designs, AI, and the emerging 5G market, among other things. Some of TSMC's customers already have five nanometer based chips in risk analysis right now and production, which could mean volume production in the next couple of years. Intel announces a 56 core Cascade Lake CPU, and then also new Optane memory dims, along other things. So Intel recently held its data-centric innovation day, wherein it announced a wide gamut of products designed to help propel the company forward with its new mantra of, quote, moving, storing, and processing data. It's very exciting. Key among the announcements was the 56-core Cascade Lake Xeon Platinum 9200 CPU, and this is a part of Intel's second generation Xeon scalable family. Notably, aside from the 56 core 112 thread uh, count, the Platinum 9200 will also offer some new and hopefully enhanced in silicon mitigations for side channel attacks, like speculative execution attacks, Spectre meltdown things like that. It also uses an overhauled 12-channel memory controller, which will support Intel's new DDR4-compatible Optane DC persistent memory DIMMs. Optane DIMMs were some of the most interesting things that we saw a couple of years ago now at the original Intel Optane reveal, where a lot of you got the same introduction that we did, which was Optane was a, a small M.2 SSD that you put in with a hard drive to accelerate things. It was basically a cache drive. Not very exciting to any of us. Optane is a bit more than that though. So the DIMMs do look promising and interesting, especially for data center applications. And that's one of the things that was announced. Alongside this, Intel announced the 10 nanometer Agile X FPGA, Intel 800 series 100 gigabit ethernet cards, Xeon D1600 SOC, and more. So quick GN related note here in the middle of these news items. The GN Steve side channel is getting some more updates. So we're planning to start publishing videos regularly every Sunday. We've already done uh, the last two weeks. So we have one on my bike frame cracking if you're into mountain biking and seeing some of the hardware behind that and custom bike builds. And then we have another one on my worst crash for the season of 2018, the downhill season. So you can check that out on the GN Steve side channel. We'll link it below if you're interested, but it's, it's mostly gonna be mountain biking stuff with some snowflake clips. So anyway, next news item. It's time to take the tinfoil hats off for this one because Epic Games has finally responded to allegations that their Epic Games launcher, famous for exclusive games and things like Fortnite, is riddled with Chinese spyware. So it took Epic a little while to officially respond to this one, at least in the the capacity that they've just done through Tim Sweeney, the CEO. And this is one of the longer standing Reddit originated theories about the Epic Games launcher is that its telemetry data is in fact spyware from China. And this comes from the fact that Tencent Holdings, a China based company investment firm has a 40% stake in Epic Games. 
after a long period of silence and growing apparently increasingly bothered by the uh, misinformation, Tim Sweeney finally, the CEO, posted the following tweet. Sweeney said, quote, I support everyone's right to complain about technology industry stuff. Epic Store with exclusive games and a Spartan feature set is a fine target for ire. But please help separate facts and opinions from lies about spyware and foreign control. And Tim Sweeney further said that he holds full responsibility, 100% of it, for any sort of uh, direction-changing decisions that affect Epic Games, including the Epic Store. And he also noted that $0.10, 40% ownership does not grant the company any overriding decision-making powers. So if you choose to believe Tim Sweeney, that's the end of that conspiracy theory. AMD sales expected to surge in second half of 2019 behind Ryzen 3000 and Navi, or at least the Navi tech unveil that's expected at Computex. AMD's outlook for 2019 is expected to be pretty good. So according to a report from Digitimes, as AMD ramps its 7 nanometer catalog for later this year, it is expected to gain an acute advantage over Intel and poise itself for a surge in sales. Now, a quick side note here. We have a video where we spoke with David Cantor, one of the uh, most respected industry analysts, about 10 nanometer and 7 nanometer and how just that, that 10 nanometer, that 7 nanometer doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot without the rest of the story. So Intel's 10 nanometer should be comparable if it ever comes out to AMD's 7 nanometer in some ways. So just because the number's lower doesn't make it instantly better. Keep that in mind. Uh, but anyway, AMD's Ryzen 3000 series and Zen 2 architecture are rumored to bring increased performance to single-threaded applications, which is something that AMD has been working on since the launch of Ryzen. And this is also allegedly going to bring some parity with Intel CPUs while maintaining multi-core performance. AMD also has the 7 nanometer Rome-based Epic processors waiting in the wings with a 64-core, 112-thread flagship. There's also the second generation of Navi, rumored to be at Computex, all fabricated on 7 nanometer and the new process. And that momentum weighed against Intel's continued 10 nanometer hurdles and 14 nanometer CPU shortages that have impacted the sales performance significantly. Uh, it's expected that this will be a buoy for AMD sales in second half of 2019. More OEMs like HP and Lenovo are turning to AMD to fill orders. This is something that at Computex, AMD told us directly it is trying to work on more where AMD understood its weakest point was with the OEMs and the system integrators where most of them still work exclusively with Intel or offer exclusively Intel parts. That is changing though and is what AMD's next biggest target was because clearly Ryzen is recognized in the enthusiast audience. Whether or not you actually have a Ryzen CPU, you know what it is and you likely know its performance. Whereas in the OEM and SI audience, it's nowhere to be found or in very few places. So that's what's changing. It looks like AMD is also seeking its first Chromebook adoption from the likes of HP and Acer. Intel finally hired a new CFO to fill the vacated position left by Bob Swan, who assumed permanent CEO duties in January. This time, Intel decided it would hire from rival Qualcomm and give AMD and Nvidia a break. Former Qualcomm CFO and Vice President George S. Davis left Qualcomm on April 2nd to become Intel's new CFO, effective April 3rd. Davis will report directly to CEO Swan. Davis and Swan have prior experience working together as well, as both were employees of Applied Materials Incorporated. And Intel's been on a bit of a tear lately, pushing a lot of fabrication plant improvements, building new plants, and hiring people like Tom Peterson. We discussed in the last episode, which, by the way, has been 100% confirmed at this point, although it was mostly confirmed last episode anyway. So Intel's really looking to get serious. It's still kind of a mess uh, with some of the launches, but the company is, is starting to really turn that ship. As slowly as it may turn, it is in fact turning. Corsair, speaking of ships, issues a recall on the H100i RGB Platinum SE cooler. So uh, if you have one, you might want to pay attention. In a forum post, Corsair issued its recall on a select batch of the H100i RGB Platinum SE closed-loop liquid coolers. The recall allegedly affects fewer than 1% of the coolers in total and it does not appear to be widespread or pervasive as a manufacturing issue, but you still may want to check if you have one. So here's what's going on. The cooler is limited to the lock code 1852. If your serial number 
involves those numbers, you might want to send it back. They are leaking coolant into the tube sleeving due to a faulty seal. Unfortunately, this is just something that happens with mass production where because they're working with a lot of factories, every now and then you get a bad batch. This appears to be one of them. The leak should be easy to identify. The coolant is bright green in color. It is not toxic. It's propylene glycol and distilled water. So you're fine there, but you still don't want it leaking because then you're not going to cool anything and you don't want it dripping all over the system in any way. So the coolant is leaking into the sleeve. It should be apparent immediately if you just look at it, but this could also be a latent defect. So if you don't see it today, you might see it later. And Corsair states the leak should be immediately noticeable, but uh, they do recommend sending the 1852 serial number demarcated coolers back for recall. So to locate the lock code, reference the serial number on the packaging or on the radiator would be where to find it. Corsair has pictures and instructions in the forum post that's linked in our show notes written by Eric Hamilton in the description below. All of the other lock codes remain unaffected. You've certainly heard about this by now, but we'll cover it anyway because we were visiting, uh, I believe, Linus when all of this went down. So TITRA, the group that organizes Computex and is the uh, Taiwan External Trade Development Council, has announced that AMD CEO Lisa Su will be hosting the pre-show keynote speech ahead of Computex, and we'll be covering it, although we may not attend that you know, in person, we'll certainly be in town and, and ready to cover it uh, remotely. As often as the case, these are streamed and it's easier to cover them from the hotel room now, sadly. So uh, Computex, the quote here, Computex, as one of the global leading technology trade shows, has continued to advance with the times for more than 30 years. This year, for the first time, a keynote speech will be held at the pre-show international press conference. Dr. Lisa Su received a special invitation to share insights about the next generation of high-performance computing. We look forward to her participation, attracting more companies to participate in Computex, bringing the latest industry insights, and jointly sharing the infinite possibilities of the technology ecosystem on this global stage. So it's, it's not 100% clear what AMD is announcing at Computex. Clearly, it's something. We already know this. Uh, the obvious choice is going to be the Ryzen 3000 series products. Our understanding from discussions at CES off record with vendors, or at least people we can't name, uh, with partners of AMD was that there should be a June launch. And this would align with that because it'll be late May, early June when this keynote happens. Uh, it looks like May 27th for when Computex is starting this year. And then we've also heard that a lot of motherboards should be exiting production around July, if not slightly before then, depending on which board it is, how complex it is, things like that. There's also been a lot of discussion about when Navi will make an appearance. And it could be that there's a tech demo at Computex for Navi. Ryzen 3000 looks like a, a firmer launch, or at least a, an announcement for a launch that would be shortly thereafter. And Navi uh, might be a bit further in the future, but we'll probably get some kind of mention in the very least. So we'll keep an eye on it, and we'll be at Computex to cover anything major that happens there, or any partner models that might show up if anyone slips this year like they normally do. And then finally, or at least the last two here, Gigabyte is bundling a 9900K with a Z390 ORS Extreme Water Force for a lot of money. It's, uh, it's $1,600, and this is a Z390 platform, mind you. So here's what's happening. Gigabyte's got cherry-picked binned 9900Ks with their $900 ARS Extreme Water Force board, and they're coupled together. That becomes a really expensive CPU at this point, but uh, and also the most expensive Z390 motherboard that we're aware of, or at least gigabytes for sure. So either way, it's an AORUS Extreme. It's got a water block. These have been known for a while now. The difference is that the CPU is binned. So the hand-picked 9900K will ship with a 5.1 gigahertz overclock with the board, and Gigabyte assures that would-be buyers that their motherboard and BIOS have been dialed in to handle the overclock. Now, how much they've been dialed in, and if there's more than 5.1 gigahertz out of that chip, we don't know. Hopefully so, because 5.1 is not all that exciting if you're paying that much money for it. So hopefully there's some more room there. But uh, either way, it looks like the BIOS has been pre-configured so that you don't have to do any work. Is that worth the amount of money? No. No, it's not. But uh, it's an option, I guess. So the engineers have stress tested the boards at higher loads compared to the standard, according to the press release. And also, the users can, quote, enjoy extreme performance with all cores at 5.1 gigahertz or higher and excellent stability. So uh, 1600 bucks, 
Let us know if you buy the combo, I guess. Finally, uh, roast of Linus Sebastians. I was at the Linus roast. If you're on float plane, you've already seen it, but uh, they will be publishing a version to YouTube as well. And just wanted to highlight that it was an interesting event. It was pretty fun. Very high production quality. It was actually kind of insane the amount of work that the LTT and LMG team put into this thing. They actually had to bring in an external production company. So a production company hired a production company because that's how complex the event got. Uh, and it was the roast sponsored by Madrina's Coffee because the, the word roast is enough for an ad, as one of my jokes is, says in the, in the roast itself. So anyway, uh, check it out if you want. It's on Floatplane, so if you're already on there, you can check it out. We're not on Floatplane, but I am happy to, to give it a shout because it was a fun event and very unique for the industry. It's, to my knowledge, the first YouTuber roast. So uh, hopefully you find it interesting, and they will be publishing a version of it. I think it's going to be in the next few weeks to YouTube. So keep an eye out for that. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe for more, or you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to support us directly and pick up a shirt like this one. I'll see you all next time.